By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back at the Knights of Thorn. We have reached the fourth round of this tournament. We're going to look at a match between Tom and Tice. So two T's playing against each other. Tom is on some kind of underworld dreams list. It's white, it's black, it's red. And he's playing against Tice, who has a list that's dominantly green, but has a little bit of black in there as well. So two pretty cool decks. Now before I'm going to... Uh, to show you the lists and discuss the decks with you. I would first like to mention that as always you can also go straight to the games. I know some of you prefer to do that. The easiest way to do that is by checking out the description below because there you have several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games and you can also find more information about the rules in that same description. So I can already tell you that we're playing according to the Swedish rules with um, reprints. I believe some reprints are allowed 10 in total, I think. So um, yeah, let's start with the deck deck section. I'm going to start with the deck of dice. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of dice. So this is really a beatdown deck, right? We see a lot of cheap creatures, all green, by the way, that he can cast very quickly. And then he can put some giant groves on them. He can also pump them up first with Pendlehavens. He's playing with four Pendlehavens. So Pendlehaven is a land from Legends that can give target one one uh, creature plus one plus two until end of turn. It's super good. And of course he can use it on his script sprites or scavenger folk, just all his one ones. And he can make them into two, three, and then, of course, you can put a Giant Grove on them, making them 5-6. And then you can put a Berserk on them that's going to double their power. So that's going to make them 10-6 with Trample. So that's kind of insane. Uh, and that all just starts with one little 1-1 one, one creature. So this deck is very explosive. But when I'm looking at this list, I notice a few cards that you don't see often in these type of decks. I think the first card that I want to discuss here is Nether Void. There's only one Nether Void in here, only three cards in total. Demonic Tutor, Mind Twist, those are the cards you usually see splashed in. But this Nether Void is pretty cool. He's playing with four Elves of Deep Shadow. They're going to help him cast these black spells. So Nether Void is an enchant world from Legends that reads all spells cast or countered unless their caster pays an additional three. So that means it's going to be very difficult for the opponent to play bigger creatures out or to quickly respond with removal to the creature threats that Tice is playing. Now, when we're talking about creature threats, I'm seeing two cards that I'm super happy about in this deck. We've got Tracker and Killer Bees. So Killer Bees is a card from Legends. It is an 0-1 flying creature. It's two green and one to cast, so three mana. And it's an 0-1 flyer. And for one green, you can give it plus one, plus one until end of turn. So that means that later in the game, the Killer Bees are really, really good because you can pump them up with all your forests. And then, of course, again, you can put a Berserk on there, doubling its power. And it's got Evasion because it has flying. Now, I remember when Killer Bees came out, people said this was one of the best cards in the set. Can you imagine? Now, obviously, we know now that that's not the case. But just to kind of you know, share with you the, the sentiment that there was around this card at the time. It was really considered a super strong card and now it hardly sees any play. So I'm really happy to see Tice playing with it and hopefully we can see it in action. Another card that I think is pretty cool is Tracker. It's one green and two to cast for a two, two creature. You can pay two green and tap it and then it uh, does an amount of damage equal to its power to target creature. And then it also gets damage back equal to that targeted uh, creature. So for example, you can tap it and it basically fights with the other creature. So if it's a 2-2, then both creatures die. If it's a 1-1, Tracker can kill it. Um, but of course, you can also pump it up with Giant Grove first and then let Tracker fight. So it's kind of, you know, a difficult way to remove creatures. But in green, you know, it's never easy to just kill a creature. So I think it's pretty cool that he's using Tracker. Um, then when we're looking at the sideboard, we're seeing some land removal, some Tranquilities. Uh, Earth says Avenger there on the sideboard, which I think is super cool. Um, and of course, some Terrors. I'm not sure if he's going to board those in because he's playing against a deck that also has some Senior Vampires, I believe, and also some Suchis. Anyway, this is the deck of Thais. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Tom. And here we see the deck of Tom. So as you can see, it's actually not the deck of Tom. They're just uh, a few cards. This could be his opening hand. I don't have uh, a deck photo of his deck, but I do know that he's playing Underworld Dreams. He's playing four of those. He's playing with Dark Rituals. He's probably also playing with Wheel of Fortune because Wheel of Fortune goes together quite well, of course, with Underworld Dreams. So Underworld Dreams, a card for three black and enchantment from Legends that reads, Underworld Dreams does one damage to opponent for each card he or she draws. So this card works really well against those annoying blue players. Hmm. 
I wonder if they still exist. Anyway, it's I, I really don't like playing against this card. It's so good against my Timmy deck. Anyway, um, when you have Wheel of Fortune, of course, there's some nice synergy between those two cards. Wheel of Fortune 1, uh, Red and 2, the Sorcery that says discard your hand. Each player does that and you draw seven new cards. So when you're drawing seven new cards as the opponent, this means with Underworld Dreams on the table, you take seven damage. If you have two Underworld Dreams, you even take double that damage, 14 points of damage. Now, I don't know how far he's gone into the rabbit hole of really truly building a full-on Underworld Dreams deck. So I don't know, for example, if he's playing with Winds of Change. Um, I don't believe he splashed any blue because um, Time Twister is also quite good with Underworld Dreams, but I don't think he's playing with one of those. I do know that he's playing with white as well, and he's got that white control package of Swords to Plowshares, Disenchant, and Balance. I also know that he's playing with red, so he's got access to Lightning Bolts. I don't know if he's playing with Setch Trolls. It kind of seems like an auto-include, but again, we'll just have to wait and see if we see it during the match. Um, he's also playing with black, so I assume he's got Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist next to the Underworld Dreams. He's also playing with Dark Rituals, as I mentioned uh, earlier. And he's also playing with Sengir Vampires. And he's also playing with Suchis. So he's got um, kind of a creature-heavy component to his deck as well. So that's all the information I can give for now. Again, unfortunately, I don't have a deck list. Tom, maybe if you see this video, you can share, if you want to, in the comments below, um, what kind of deck strategy you were running. But then again, it's more um, it's going to be more surprising when we see the actual match. Talking about that, we've talked about the deck of Thais, now we've talked about the deck of Tom, so let's go to round number four of the Knights of Thorn. Game number one, here we go. We see Thais has started with a forest. I'm expecting one drop from him, so he's on the green beatdown deck with a little bit of black, and then we see Tom sitting opposite. He's on the white, black, red deck, and he's playing Underworld Dreams. There's a Library of Alexandria, so this is a great opener by Tom, of course. And he was on the draw, so that means he's got seven now, so he can activate the Loa. Probably going to do that at the end step of Tai, so it's now important for Tai to find an answer. There's a Strip Mine stripping it. Look at that, Tom is actually not using the Library. Maybe he took a mulligan. Okay, now he is realizing I can use it. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. He's going up to eight cards. Probably the attack here with the Elves of Deep Shadow. He's going to drop to 19. And we're going to see some more action. There's a Scavenger Folk, a card from the Dark, a 1-1. One, one. You can pay one green and tap. Sacrifice it to destroy target artifact. But that Strip Mine is very good for Thais. Remember, this is a format where you only play with one Strip. So Thais is kind of lucky finding that. There's the Scrubland. And there's a Swords to Plowshares on the Scavenger Folk. So Scavenger Folk is annoying enough here for Tom to take care of it. Perhaps he's got a good artifact in hand. We'll just have to wait and see. And of course, it's now up for Thais to put as much pressure on as he can. There's a Pendlehaven. So he can use the Pendlehaven to pump up his Elves of the Deep Shadow to a 2-3. But maybe he's got better things to do. He's playing with Spitting Slug. He's playing with Argovian Pixies. He's playing with Killer Bees, which he could now play out because he's got 3 mana. Tapping 2, taking a damage, going to go to 20. There's a Demonic Tutor. Ooh, no, he's taking it back, changing his mind. <laughs> but now he's shown Tom, of course, the Demonic Tutor. But he has changed his mind. That's interesting. He is attacking instead, dealing 2 points of damage. Tom is going to drop to 17 and pass. he passes the turn here. Interesting. So no creatures from Thais. When you look at this list, I really expected him to pay more, uh, play more creatures at this stage in the game. So that's good news for Tom. That means he, he gets some breathing space. He seems to be really in the tank here. Has a full grip of cards. Playing out a factory, which is really good against the deck of Thais. Of course, Thais does have access to crumbles. And remember, the Mishra's Factory now still has Summoning Sickness, so it cannot pump itself yet. So there's the attack. He's probably not going to block here. He's going to take the damage. He's going to pump it. So two damage here for Tom's going to drop to 15. Two green open for Thais. Are we going to see a Script Sprites? Are we going to see a Lanawar Elves? Argovian Pixies? More Scavenger Folk? Nothing of the sort. Just a pass turn. And I feel like this is in the advantage of Tom, right? Because the green deck wants to put a lot of pressure on early game. 
And so far, Thijs only has dealt five points of damage. There's another Mishra's factory. So Tom can start blocking that Elves of the Deep Shadow next turn. And I think the longer the game takes, the better it is for Tom here. He's going to tap the Scrubland. Ooh, he's actually going to attack. This is a surprise. Are we going to see a crumble? There's a crumble. I'm a little bit surprised about this attack. You know, I mean, you're playing against an aggressive player. I believe Tom's deck is more mid-range. Then again, I don't know what is in his hand and the choices that he makes based on that. So he's going to pass turn here. Anyway, this is a good development for Thijs. He still has that Demonic in hand. There's a Nether Void. He could cast a Nether Void. That would mean he doesn't deal any damage, but Nether Void is great here because then Tom will have to put, uh, pay three extra for each spell that he wants to cast. Well, also Thijs actually, but Thijs doesn't really care that much about it. So he's a little bit in the tank. He could attack here for two more points, put Tom on 13. He also has that Demonic Tutor in hand still. He's taking his time. Don't know what the other cards are. He also hasn't played a land yet. What I really like about this deck of dice, by the way, is that Elves of Deep Shader really has a function in the deck. He is attacking for two, so he's not going to cast a Nether Void. Interesting. And he's passing the turn, so he's choosing damage over the potential Nether Void. It's always interesting when you play with these aggressive decks when you have to do what? There is a strip mine on the Pendlehaven. And there's a pass. Is that a forest there found by Thijs? It's a bayou. It's even better. So are we now going to see that Nether Void? There's an attack, so kind of signaling that he has a Giant Grove. So no block here from Tom. I think that's a good decision. So Giant Grove or Crumble. Or it's just a bluff. That's always a possibility. But just one damage for Tom, of course, because Thijs no longer has the Pendlehaven. Already played out a land for turn. He isn't a tank, though. Maybe he's thinking about... Okay, now he's playing the... Demonic Tutor. I thought maybe he was thinking about putting a double Giant Grove and a Berserk on there. Who knows? Because then it would be end of the line for Tom. Unless Tom, of course, then has a Swords of Plowshare to respond to that. Ooh, he's going to take the Berserk. Does that mean he's got multiple Giant Groves in hand and he can finish the game next turn? That is so interesting. Again, it is always risky against a player that has access to white because if they have that Swords to Plowshares at the key moment. Some players now um, also play with Glasses of Urza in these aggressive green decks because then they can kind of see what the opponent has and when to play that big Berserk move. But it's a difficult choice because, of course, Glass of Urza takes a slot and it's not it doesn't deal any damage. Here we see a Badlands being played by Tom in just a turn. Tom not doing too much. Just... Um, you know, trying to stay alive, but he's already on 12. Remember, Thijs has that Berserk. If he's got double Giant Grove Berserk, he can deal 14 points of Trample damage. There's an attack. Let's see what's going to happen. He's just taking the damage. I'm loving this. <laughs> now, are we going to see some action? No, we're not. A lot of our elves... I was expecting some giant groves and some, some berserks. Instead, we're going to see another Lanawar Elves. Very interesting. There's a Black Lotus. Cracking the Lotus. Tapping a green. There is the Nether Void. So there's this Enchant World from Legends. That's pretty problematic, I think, for Tom here. Because his deck is really more into the mid-range, and now he's got to pay three extra for everything that he wants to cast, so that's a problem. 
He's on 11. Playing another swamp. Or well, actually his first swamp. He's got four lands now. The big question is next turn when Tice is going to attack. Will Tom animate the Mishra's factory to try and block one of the two creatures? And then what will happen? We know that one of those two cards in Tice's hand is actually a Berserk. I wonder if he also has a Giant Growth. That would be ideal for Tice. He could Giant Growth Berserk. Then again, he doesn't have enough mana to do both because the Nether Void also works for him. Hmm, that is interesting. Just attacking with one, that means he still has access to Crumble and Giant Grove. He can play that out despite the Nether Void being on the table because he's got four mana open. And just a pass here by Tice. Again, this is not too bad by Tom. For Tom, I mean. Playing out another Mistress Factory, five lands. Yeah, those factories are super annoying for Tice. Ooh, he's gonna do something. Tapping five mana for one sinkhole. Taking care of the bayou. And that's actually pretty important, pretty big deal because of the nether void that's on the table. Then again, now he's got a free attack for two, so he can put him to eight, or he can play, I believe he just drew into a script sprite. So he could play the script sprites for four. That's what he's gonna do, I think. He's gonna drop to 20. There's the script sprite. So script sprites, of course, being a flyer, that is very important here for Tice. Again, it's just a one-one though. If Tice can find, for example, the Pendlehaven again, he's playing four Pendlehaven in the in the deck. He can start dealing some more damage with the script sprites. There's a City of Brass, so now Tom is really finding the mana. He's got six in total. Remember, there is that added uh, cost to cast a spell of three because of Nether Void. For example, to cast a Sengir, I know he's playing with Sengirs and Suchis. A Sengir is going to cost you eight mana now with the Nether Void, and a Suchi seven. So both of those cards cannot be cast by Tom. Of course, if he has a land drop next turn, then he can start casting a Suchi. And Tom really in the tank here. <laughs> Gonna do something, tapping a black. Tapping the scrubland. Oh, he's gonna animate, he's gonna attack. <laughs> I'm just I'm just really surprised. I'm really surprised about this move. I think I think if you're Tash, you're really happy with this. You're like, okay, whatever. I take four damage to go to 16, but now I can attack back at least for three. I mean, the Nether Void's on the table as well. So, I mean, it's impossible for Tom, for example, to cast a Bolt in response to a Giant Grove Berserk or anything. There's the attack. So he's keeping four mana open for a possible pump spell. We're probably going to see it. There's a Giant Grove, so he's going to deal five points of damage, halving the life total here. I think I think if you're Tom, I wouldn't have attacked. I mean, of course, then you still would have taken the damage from the script sprites, so it w would only net you one extra life. But still, with these games, that could be important. He could be on six instead of five. I do think that's uh, that's an important difference. And you're really more, in this matchup, you're more the control player and, and Tice is more the aggressor, right? So you got to know what your role is in the game. But of course, Tom knows his deck best. He's got the full grip of cards. Maybe he's just playing towards his outs and he needs these points of damage. Who knows? Reality is that he's in a tough spot because of that Nether Void right now. He needs to deal with the Flyer first. He's got enough mana to cast a Bolt. I believe that's what he's going to do now, perhaps. Tapping four mana, that would be the cost of a bolt or a sword. Yeah, there's the bolt. Taking care of the sprites, which is really good. He is giving Tais a little opening here to when he attacks with both creatures, but then he's going to lose one of the creatures 
to the factory, but of course then Tom's gonna get one damage from his own City of Brass. But I think this is a good play here. Taking care of that script rights. There's a Pendle Haven in the hand of Tice. That is pretty good. Then again, Tom's still on five. Now remember, Tice still has that Berserk in hand. One of the things he could do is just attack with one creature, bump it with Pendlehaven, make it a 2-3, then use his four mana to cast a Berserk, making it a 4-3 with Trample. Interesting. He's not... Okay, maybe he's got a Crumbling Hand or another Giant Grove. Tom kind of has to pump the factory here, right? So he's going to go to four. This is going to be interesting. What is he going to do? Going to block the Lanawer. Now we're probably going to see some action. There's a Giant Grove. That's the game. That's enough. So he's going to win game number one here. And now both players are going to dive into their sideboards. And we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So it's 0-1 for Taz. That means Tom is on the play, starting with the Batlands and a pass. We did see a single Underworld Dreams, by the way, in game one for Tom. So curious to see if we can see that side of his deck now in game number two. Look at this opener by Tice. Bayou, Kraken the Lotus. There is a Argovian Pixies, a Scripps Sprites, and a Scripps Sprites. Now this is really beat down. Four points of damage waiting for Tom next turn. Hopefully he can find a Bolt. I mean, in theory, he could play Scrubland. Bolt and Swords. There we go. There's a Scrubland. So does he have a Bolt and a Swords? And he can take care of two creature threats. But this is a great opener, of course, for Tice. Very aggressive. This is what his deck wants to do. And of course, both of those cards I just mentioned, the Swords and the Bolt are instants. So Tom could also just wait. Prefers to do it main. Taking care of the Argovian Pixies. So that's going to save him two points of damage. I think that's a good decision here. Let's see if Thais can up the pressure a little bit. There's a Pendlehaven. Ooh, more bad news because he can now pump one of the sprites with the Pendlehaven. Choosing to do so, going to deal three points of damage. Tom should drop to 17 instead of 16, exactly changing the dice here. And no more pressure from Thais. So at least that's positive here for Tom. No more pressure. Let's see if he plays with a Setch Troll, shall we? Tapping three. There's an Underworld Dreams. So that's a little bit of damage for Tice, but I don't think Tice really minds one Underworld Dreams. That's still manageable, and he can still attack. He can now deal three more points of damage, put Tom on 14, or does he have better options in hand? There's the Land Drop. It's a Strip Mine. Could strip, of course, the Batlands. Because then Tom doesn't have access anymore to red mana, so he can no longer cast a Bolt, for example. There's the attack. He's going to drop to 15. No pump of the Pendlehaven. So I guess he's got something else in hand that he wants to play out for 3. Does he have a Tracker, Killer Bees, Spitting Slug? I'm just really hoping to see the Killer Bees. I think it's a super cool card. We haven't seen it in Game 1. Tapping two. There's a Chaos Orb. Interesting. So he's got some options. He can use the orb now because Tom stepped out because he's playing with white. So right now, even if he has a disenchant, he cannot play it upon activation. Or he can strip, of course, a land. Oh, he's going to flip on the Batlands. I'm probably going to strip something else later. Nice flip, dice. That's a hit. Oh, things are looking really bad for Tom here. Also, with that strip mine still, there's another scrubland, so no access to red. Then again, if Tom just has one swords, that would help him a lot here. Tapping three, what is he going to do? Another Underworld Dream, so that means two points of damage for Tice every time he draws a card. So he's going to drop to 17 because of that draw. There's the attack. So Tom's probably going to drop to 12 here, if the Pendlehaven's going to be used. Tice is using it, so he's going to drop to 12, taking 3 points of damage. Yeah, he's going to use the strip. 
What would be really good for Tom here is if he can find a red source, then cast a, a Wheel of Fortune, because that would deal 14 points of damage to Tais. Unfortunately for Tom, there's no red source here. There's a Mishra's factory on the board. Tapping two here. If he has a sinkhole, that would be really good. Okay, tapping three instead. What does he have for three? There's a Mind Twist. So remember, Mind Twist is at random. The card's just so good. So Mind Twist. So Ty's going to lose two cards. Going to lose a ah, Spinning Slug and a Giant Grove. That is really good news for Tom here. Especially the Giant Grove. Ty's taking two more damage, dropping to 15. He can deal three again, though. So he's kind of winning that damage race. Tom's going to drop to 9. I wonder if Tom's going to attack next turn with his factory. There's an Elves of Deep Shadow on the side of Tice. Tice being on 15, Tom being on 9. I really wonder what he's going to do with the factory. There is a Swamp. Tapping a black. Playing a soul ring, tapping the soul ring, tapping the scrub, tapping five in total. Sangir Vampire! This is brilliant here for Tom. The Sangir is awesome because it can block the flyers, can block everything. It's huge against the green deck. It is so big, and every turn he's dealing two points of damage to Taz because of the Underworld Dreams. Wow, the tables have turned here. And this is annoying when you're playing the color combination that Dice is playing. Also losing that Giant Grove to the Mind Twist. If he would have still had the Giant Grove, it was great. He could just keep attacking New Spendelhaven and Grove to kill the Sangir Vampire. There's the attack, though. <laughs> is he bluffing? I think this is a good decision by Tom, because if you take the damage, you're on 9. That's bad. So we're going to see a counter on the Sengir Vampire. I love this. No Giant Grove here by Tice. So it is now a 5-5 Flyer. You don't see this often. This is super cool. And this is, this is bad news for Tice. Tom being here on 6. He could attack with the Factory. I think I would just keep it as a blocker. For the Elves of Deep Shadow. Just because you're playing against a deck with, with Berserk, um, you know, with, uh, with Giant Groves, it's just too risky. But we'll, we'll see. He is attacking. He did that in game one too, so he is being consistent with that. And it's a good decision here. We see the Crumble. And there's a bad land. So he's found his red source. Both players are top decking. It's looking pretty good for Tom here. I think if you're Tash, you can attack, put Tom on four. Yeah, just a pass. I think that's a good decision. The problem for Tash are those two Underworld Dreams. They're, they're going to kill him slowly. There's the pass turn. He's going to drop to nine. And remember, Tash didn't see the Underworld Dreams in game one, so he probably didn't board in any Tranquilities. There's a, uh, a Lanawar Elves on the side of Tash. So next turn, he can, I guess, attack with all three, kind of do an alpha strike. It's still everybody's game, though, because if Tice picks up, for example, a Giant Grove. If Tom has, for example, a Bolt, that would be great for him. Tice now dropping to seven. So next turn, Tom can attack with the Sengir. Forcing Tice to jump. But he's already attacking now. Probably going to block the script sprites here. Are we going to see... Are we going to see a giant growth? One giant growth is enough for Tice to actually win the game. Now he's going to pump the elves. So he's going to deal three points of damage, I believe. So Tom's going to be on three. No giant growth, it seems. And the Sengir is a 6-6. Six, six. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, Killer Bees making an entrance. This is a really exciting match. 
And this is really tough for Tom because if he attacks, Tice can chump, has to chump on the killer bees, and then he can kill Tom on the crackback. Tom needs to get rid of one of the creatures. If he can kill the killer bees here with a sword or a bolt, the game is over. There's the attack. He's got a chump. I love it. A 7-7 seven, seven Sangir. That's so cool. And oh, winning it on a Wheel of Fortune. This is beautiful, man. I love it. Tom, well played. And it's just great to see the Sangir and finishing it off here with the Wheel of Fortune. What an exciting game number two. And the best news is it's 1-1, one, one, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to go to game number three. Game number three. Here we go. So Thais starting with a Bayou tapping for a Llanowar Elves and a pass turn. Let's see what Tom can do. So of course Thais being on the play is a big advantage for his deck. There is a Library of Alexandria, that is nice. Can it stick? Remember in game one it was removed very quickly by a strip mine. There's a Bayou tapping three Ooh, an Ice Storm coming in from the sideboard. Again, Tom can use it, I believe. Exactly. <laughs> he keeps forgetting to use the Loa, man. Use the Loa. Anyway, he's up to nine now. And uh, let's see what he can do. Is he able to play out two cards? That's the big question. I believe his deck is powerless, by the way. No, it's not. I just want to say it's powerless, and there he plays a Mox Pearl. So this is really good for Tommy. He doesn't have to discard, and he's ramping up. So that's good news. There's the attack for one. No pump, nothing. So just putting Tom on 19. Tapping a Bayou. There's a Crumble. And this is good, you know, because Crumble in this way, putting using your Crumble for Moxon, it's kind of like land removal. And of course, you know, Tice wants to win the tempo game. So this is a very good play. There's another Scrubland. I do see a Killer Bees in hand, I believe. A Maze of If in hand. That's not going to be too useful at this point. But of course, he can play it as a land drop. Did he already play the Bayou then, I guess, as a land for turn? Interesting. So he's playing the Script Sprites and passing turn. Maybe Tom wants to do something on end step. He seems to be really stuck. He's in the tank, as I like to call it. Tapping for one white. Yeah, he is thinking about the sword, sorting the lana else. I think this is a good decision. Also because Thais didn't play out a land, kind of signaling that he doesn't have a land in hand. We know that he's got that one maze of if. Tapping three. There's the underworld dreams again. So now he's going to drop back to 20. I do believe that's a land, another Bayou. He can now play the Killer Bees if I'm not mistaken. What are those other cards? It's kind of hard to see. Tapping three, there's the Killer Bees. So an 0-1 card from Legends with flying for one green, you can give it plus one, plus one until end of turn. And that means next turn, Tom is in for some serious pain unless he can find, well, a Bolt, for example. Bolt the Bees, Bolt the Bees. The Bees are gone. There's another Underworld Dreams. I mean, it's, it's looking good. Remember game two? This is how Tom won game two. I mean, two damage per draw, that's serious. I wonder if Thais sported in his tranquilities after that game two. So Tom, you're dropping to 16, and there's a pass. So Thais is in trouble here. There is a factory. And I think what makes this a tough matchup for Thais, another Underworld Dreams. Ooh la la, three damage per card drawn. That's a bolt per card you draw. That is brutal. That is absolutely brutal. And what I wanted to say, I think a problem for Thais against the type of decks that Tom has is, you know, that Tom's playing with and with bolts and with swords. And those cards are perfect removal against a creature heavy deck like the one of Thais. And now it's important for, for Tom to try to find an answer for the Killer Bees. 
Even if he cannot find an answer though, it's not too bad. Let's see what Tom can do. Three cards in hand. Plays a Batlands, two cards in hand. If he can find another Seng gear like he did in, uh, in game number two, that would be ideal. Or just removal. Look at that, he's gonna attack. We're probably gonna see a maze activation, exactly. Tapping four. There's a Suchi. That's actually pretty good because that can up the pressure a little bit here. There we see an untap. Dice taking three damage because of the triple underworld dreams. He can attack for four, put Tom on 11. The problem is he's gonna then take two in return, gonna go to 10 and take three more from the dreams, gonna go to seven. So it, 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 this is really difficult for Thais. An option, of course, is just to attack with the sprites. But he's not doing it. I mean, his strategy is beat down. He's got a crumble in hand, it seems, there for Thais. Or not. Looks like a crumble to me. Now he has to decide with how much he wants to pump the bees. Just putting one green in there. So that's two damage for Tom. Three, no, two damage for Tom. Gonna make it a 4-5, so it's now a 4-5, that's 5 damage, gonna drop to 10. No Berserk though. And second main playing a Script Sprite, so what he could potentially do is jump block with the Script Sprites. Does he want to or does he want that extra point of damage? It's quite interesting. When you're playing these aggressive beatdown decks, some people say it's like super simple. You don't have to make a decision. That's not true. You're constantly calculating, trying to figure out when to play the growth, when to block, how to use your maze, when to pump, in this case, the killer bees or use mana for other purposes. It is super, super um, difficult to play aggro right all the time, to play really efficient. And here we see Tom tapping four. Are we going to see another Suchi tapping five? Sengir Vampire? There is the Sengir again. Wow. This is this is great for Tom, actually. Passing the turn here. And what Tom has to do is focus on surviving because the three Underworld Dreams will kill Thais anyway. So he's got two fantastic blockers right now. Do remember, Thais has that maze to take a blocker out of combat if need be. This fourth forest is very important here for, for Thais because it means he can pump the killer bees to a 4-5, killing the Sengir. And of course, it's super risky for Tom not to block the killer bees. This is gonna be a very interesting combat step. And it's so difficult to play against his green aggro decks because you're constantly thinking, does he have a giant growth? You know, does he have a berserk? But then again, you know, if you're constantly fearful and worried about those options, you cannot really, you know, make a good decision. You have to play towards your outs. I think I think here what I would do if Thais is going to attack with the Killer Bees as well. I, ah, it's tough. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to say let the Killer Bees fly by, you know, um, but it's tough. Because then if he has a growth... Or a Berserk, it could be over. Well, actually, it's not. If he's got a Giant Grove, he could deal six point of damage with the Killer Bees and one point with the Script Sprites because he's going to block the other Script Sprites. So he'll take seven, he'll be on three. If he has a Berserk, he can also deal six points of damage, taking seven in total, he'll be on three. So I think... I think if he attacks, what I would do, again, it's easy from my position here looking at this game, I would not block the Killer Bees. But what do I know? I don't know what card Tom has in hand. I don't know what card Tice has in hand. I know nothing. I mean, if Tice has, for example, a Bolt in there, that would be ideal for him. Only attacking with the Killer Bees. Ho <laughs> ho Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. He is blocking the Killer Bees. Oh, I love this. Pumping it. Making it a 4-5. So he's going to lose the Bee. He's going to lose the Sengir. 
I mean, this makes sense as well, because Tom is saving four points of damage. And this is a race, right? We know that Thais loses three life every time. If Tom has a bolt here, that would be super good. Bolt on the bees. And that basically wins him the game. You could, of course, also consider keeping the bolt to go to the dome. Ooh, he wants to attack with both. He's got the maze, though. So, yeah, he attacks with both. He's probably going to maze the Suchi here. That means he's going to go to seven. So interesting. He, Of course, he can also choose to double block. He could double block the factory, kill the factory, maze the Suchi. And Dice is like, what are you planning here? How many bolts have you played, etc., etc. This is so interesting. Remember, this is the decisive game, right? Game number three. So both of these players were like, okay, what to do? So there's a 2-2 coming in. He's taking the damage. Gonna drop to seven. Means next turn he's gonna be on four. What are those two cards in hand for Tom? If he has a bolt, I would bolt the bees. That's what I would do. And if you have double bolt, it's super easy. You can just go to the dome, put Tice on one, and then he kills himself. Ooh, there's a City of Brass, so no bolt there. Tapping one for white, maybe. Ooh, no, it's something else. What does he have? A balance. Oh, that's a really good card, balance. Because it's going to take care of two creatures on the side of Thais here. And of course, to the two cards, this balance is quite nice. Oh, Giant Grove in there, losing Giant Grove, losing Crumble, which was great against the Suchi and against the Factory. And he's gonna lose both of his Crypt Sprites, probably. Oh, because it's a creature, he animated it. Of course, of course. So because it's a creature, Tom has two creatures. Yeah, that's true. That is an oversight. Perhaps it would have been better for Tom to play the balance post-combat. Interesting here, but this balance kind of changed it. I think the best w thing for Tom to happen here is the fact that it discarded the two cards in hand for, for Tice. Losing the Giant Grove is a really big deal. And Tice... Is now in four, is he? Or is he on six? I believe he's on four. He went from seven, took three damage. Yeah, he's on four. He's got two more turns. There's the attack. Pumping it up. Ooh, putting him on five. But then next turn, he can, of course, attack with both of his creatures. Oh, but he can block one. Tice can still win it though, because next turn he's going to go to one. If Tom attacks, animates the factory, attacks with Suchi and factory, Tice is going to chump one of those two, send one of them back with Maze, and then attack with Killer Bees. He's going to animate and attack. If Tom can find a bolt, he's won it. Blocking that, sending back the Suchi. Is Dice gonna win this on his Killer Bees? There's the untap. Gonna go to one. Gonna draw a card. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. There's the attack. Pumping it up with everything. Winning it here on the Killer Bees. I think in all honest... Oh, pfft. Wow, I think looking back at this again, it's easy to say. I think Tom is acknowledging this as well. If you would have played that balance post-combat, or I should say pre-combat, then 
I think he could have won, but I'm I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, Tom and Tice, thank you for this very exciting match. You're bringing this to the table right here on Timmy Talks. And uh, wow, man, this was such a good matchup. I love it. I love it. I love it. And also, thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you like what you see, I will be posting more action from the Knights of Thorns. So make sure to subscribe and ring that bell. And when you do ring that bell, you will be notified about um, all the updates here on Timmy Talks. I post three videos a week. So um, if you're already subbed yet, thank you for that. Please uh, like, share and comment on this video. All these things help um, the channel move forward. Man, I really enjoyed that match. Um, oh, before you go, I keep forgetting this. Uh, I also have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Please have a look at it and consider becoming a patron of the channel because via Patreon you can support the channel financially and you can help me keep the channel afloat. So it already starts with a dollar a month. If you want, we can even make an episode together at one of the higher tiers. So please take a moment, visit patreon.com slash TimmyTalks and have a look. And one of the perks is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every episode. Every episode, including this one? Yeah, of course. Let's go to the end scroll. Ich bin